Okay, we're on page eight now in the grammar book. We're talking about strong verb. Um, obviously that shows emotion or it gives the reader an image. I always like to use the example of the dog ran after the cat. Ran is the verb, but if you say the dog chased the cat, then you've got chased and that's a stronger verb because you get a visual, you know, if they're chasing right on each other like that, or the dog is on the cat's tail, I should say. Um, usage with pronoun agreement. So pronoun replaces a noun in order to re um, avoid repetition. You already know that. And antecedent is the word the pronoun refers to. So Victoria, read that next, that example sentence there. The boy wandered. He did not hear his mother call him. Okay, good. So obviously he is referring back to the boy. So he is the pronoun and the boy is the antecedent. That's what that refers to. The big chart in the middle of the page, you've seen this before last year, singular and plural pronouns. First person is you, right? Like if you're playing Minecraft and you're playing it in first person, you're seeing what you're doing. If you, you're playing in second person, you can see the head of the guy, right, in front of you. So it's kind of like that for writing. It's either a first person, like you're involved, or you're second person, a little bit removed. So you're still using words like you. And then third person is when you're talking about somebody completely different. So let's just read across these pronouns. Look at singular first person and read those words across. It says, I, me, my, mine. You guys read it with me. Ready? Okay. I, I, me, me my, my, mine. And then second person, you, you, you your, yours. yours. And then third person, he, she, she it, him, him, her, it, it his, his, her, it. it's, his, hers, its. So at the top, you'll see the categories subjective, objective, and possessive. Um, and those are different types of pronouns that you use in, in the sentence, depending on the sentence. Um, if you're the object of the sentence, it's objective. So we'll go through those a little bit more as we go. But um, plural, let's read those. For first person plural, it says, we, us, our, ours, second person, you, you, your, yours, and third person, they, them, their, theirs. So the boy wandered. He did not hear his mother call him. The boy refers to one boy. That's singular. And therefore, the only pronouns in singular row to replace the word boy, it's going to be he. The boys wandered. They did not hear their mother call them. Obviously, those pronouns are all plural to go with boys because it has an S there. It's plural. So to fix it, you're just going to draw a line through the mistake and write the correct pronoun above it, just like in that example at the bottom of the page. Okay, let's keep going. Page nine. Uh, this is the practice page. So, do you feel like reading it today? I won't. Okay, thank you. The desperate villagers feared the beast. He would send he would send elephants and men with guns and torches into the jungle. Good. The vocabulary is desperate. How would you explain what desperate is? What is something you would be desperate for? If you've been out hiking in the desert all day, it's hot, it's dry. What would you be desperate for? Water. Water. Yeah, <laughs> A helicopter maybe to come and pick you up. Well, having little or no hope is really what the definition of desperate is. Um, so if you're dying and you need water, that's pretty desperate. So put a check mark with vocabulary at the top. And then we're gonna talk about the articles. What are those again? And, and, and the or the, yes. So there's three of them. Go ahead and find those and label those. We're on page nine. And then seven nouns. Audrey, you want to do the seven nouns? Uh, villagers. Yes. Thieves. Yes. Elephants. Yes. Men. Yes. Guns. Yes. Torches. Yes. Jungle. Yes. <laughs> 
Good. Pronouns, Oliver. Um, he, right after beast, and then uh, them. Yes. After kill. Yes, very good. Although he is not the correct pronoun. If it says the desperate villagers feared the beasts, it's referring back to the villagers, which is plural. Yeah. So what should the pronoun be there? They. They. So just draw a line through he and write they above it. And then you can put PR for pronoun. <laughs> and then the prepositional phrases, Victoria. Um, uh... Remember with those? guns and torches good that's one to kill them that's a good one but that's not it to kill is going to be one of those infinitives you remember those from last year so not that one into the there you go into the jungle whenever you see like kill is a verb but whenever you have two in front of it it becomes an infinitive but it's not a preposition even though it looks like it could be no verb in the prepositional phrases so, Audrey, what about the main clauses? There's uh, two of them. From the to be. Yes. And then he to them. Yes. And usually it is the whole sentence. But sometimes, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. So you can put brackets around the two sentences. Subject verb pairs. So what about the verbs, Oliver? We'll start with those. Then we kill. Kill is not a verb because it's an infinitive. infinitive because it has the word two in front of it. Um, so don't count that one. Feared? Feared is a verb, yes. Bend? Yes. And then there's a helping verb right before that. Uh, would. Would. So would send. So going back to fear, Victoria, okay. who's the subject um, feared? Oh, villagers. Villagers. So put an S there. And then who um, would send? They. They. You got that back there, Oliver? Okay. And then the openers, we only know one so far. So subject and subject. subject, and subject. So just put a one and then the word subject. Capitals, you guys could probably figure that out by yourself. First words of the sentence. End mark, which we put at the end. Period. Period. Usage we already fixed. Done. Woohoo! You can write it out later when you get home. Go ahead and get out Maori that you did for your homework, your keyword outline. Did you guys get a chance to retell it to your parent or yeah. somebody? Oh, good. Okay. What looks like someone that would you say right here? I'm not even going to answer that question. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that right there. No comment. No comment. That's right. No, I know. Your mom wouldn't let you, though. That's for sure. Would she know? I could have gone away with it. She would know. Your mom's pretty good. She's, she's aware. She knows what's going on. <laughs> okay. So um, you re restated that. Oops, let me look at the notes here. Let's just practice like three of them. So we'll start with Victoria. You can do like Roman numeral one and then one and two. Just practice with looking up at me and when you think of a sentence for those So three. I'm doing one and two. And then so you'll do like Roman numeral one and then one and two. Okay. So you'll do three all together. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. The Maori were indigenous people to New Zealand. Okay, good. They originated in Hawaii, which is thought to be Tahiti. Okay, good. I said that weird. Sorry. <laughs> that was right, though. I knew what you were saying. In the 1800s, the British and Maori got in a conflict about the Maori land. Good. Nice job. That was good. Are you laughing? No. <laughs> you got to be nice in here. I liked it. Okay, so you do three and then Roman numeral two 
and then regular number one. <laughs> so just keep going, do the next three. Does that make sense? Okay. Is it a hard one? Well, I don't, I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> I knew this one. Do you need to look back? What do you have for three? Uh, Maori, British, wars, issues, traditional. Uh, Maori, uh, difficult, and result. Oh, you must have some symbols in there and stuff. So that's what oh, I'm I know, right? That was a hard one, though, to be fair. That was hard. My Let's... sentence that was probably very short. Let me look really quick what that sentence was. The Maori and the British fought several wars over land and issues surrounding traditional Maori lands today are still difficult to resolve. So basically they fought several wars in the past, but they still fought, fight wars today. And because of the issues of the surrounding traditional Maori lands. I don't know, does that help you? Yeah, I'm just trying to remember all my symbols I need to learn. <laughs> you can split it up, split it in half if you want. You know what I mean? Or you can use hers. <laughs> yeah, I'll just steal the <laughs> That's fine. The Maori, Maori and British war had wars that were difficult to be resolved. Okay, that works. And that sums it up. The Maori culture has elements to it that are diff, uh, that are not common for other people groups. Okay, I like how you put that. The Maori press their noses together to greet each other. Good. So weird. That is weird. Um. Um, it's like a little too personal, all right? <laughs> Maori build carved houses for events and ceremonies. Okay. The Maori has something called the Kata, which is a dance symbolizing pride, strength, and unity. Good. And um, the Kata is like stomping and then slapping your body and then like doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Sticking your tongue out, protruding tongue. Was that part of that one too? Okay. All right. That's good. Well, let's actually go on to the next week. So we can put this one away. So week one, uh, if you have your extra binder with you, you can put that in your extra binder folder, put it away somewhere else. Do you have an extra one? Oh, because you don't have the actual one yet. Yeah. So right. I just put it off. That's fine. Things. Okay. And then um, if you, do you have an extra binder or folder? No? Do you have an extra one? Um, I have one, but it's full of other stuff. Yeah. You know those accordion file folder thingies? You can use that to put your finished stuff in if you want. That way this binder doesn't get too full. You know what I mean? But you can keep it in there for now if you want. I don't, I don't really care. Does anyone okay. have this much paper? Because I certainly don't. Well, you never know. You probably don't need to bring it to class every day, but yeah, go ahead and put those away. We're going to skip those. We're moving on to week two, which is Frederick Douglass or Harriet Tubman. But we're going to read about Frederick Douglass. So I didn't make copies for you, so you'll have to just kind of look off of hers, but. <laughs> so week two. I guess it's say week four. This is week two. 
Weird. The yellow um, page goes, what's the yellow page anyway? Oh, you There's a couple of yellow ones. Is that from week one? Yeah. That's from week two. Okay. Yeah, they're both from week two. The one is the dress ups and stuff like yes. that. Yes. This one is the no makeup. Okay. So. We'll start on the yellow page because we're only going to add one dress up. It's kind of nice we have one. Yeah. Actually, just a few paragraphs, but we only have one dress up word. I take that back too. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. <laughs> It's still only two, it's not like 10. True. On your yellow page with the dress ups. We're gonna have another editor. In this there. one. Yeah, you guys know about that. So I'm not even gonna cover that, but yeah, that's your mom or your dad or whoever. Yeah, take that one out too. And that one. We rarely even talk about these because you guys already know these. But when we put this away, it'll go behind model charts and outlines because this is like a model of an outline. For your dress up page though, this one is the one I want to talk about next. This is page 23. We're looking at this page right now, 23. This is from week two. So when you get out week two, it's called uh, Frederick Douglass and Her or Harriet Tubman. And you're gonna get out page 23. And we're gonna add for number one, you guys guessed it, I'm sure. L Y adverb. I do a little dash, L Y adverb. And then number two is who, which clause. We're just gonna dive right into it. When do you use a who clause? Remember back when those days? <laughs> I see, I see what you're doing back there. Well, when do you use a who or a which? How do you know the difference when you use one of those clause, clauses? There you go. Yes, there you go. So who is talking about, see, you were saved by your friend up here. So who is talking about a person or maybe even an animal that's acting like a person, a character? And then you would use which if you're talking about a thing, right? A place, which is across on the other side of the world or which is over down the street or something like that. So you're gonna start adding one L-Y word and one who, which clause to your writing. And when you add those, you only have to underline the who or the which. You guys remember that. Whoa. Sometimes there's crazy trucks that work on there. Yes. I think it's uh, garbage. Oh, maybe. Or the semi. You can use whom or whose also for the who which clause. You can use whom if you like to sound like you're all fancy like that. Or whose. All right. Next, we are going to look at Frederick Douglass. So go, go ahead and get that one out. And I'll just give you my copy so you at least can have it to read. Or somewhere. We're going to be like making sure we don't want to do this. Too. Yes. So you will need line paper for that. You will need Forever and ever. Amen. Nope. Does anyone need any line paper? I have uh, to I can't. Get rid of it. <laughs> still trying to get where my hand is. Please. <laughs> With a surgeon. Where do you want to go? That's the of San Francisco's paper. It's the only hat. There it is. Wow. It would be a cloud outside. <laughs> So you don't have to bring that whole stack every week. You could keep it at home and then just bring a smaller stack with you. But you will need lined paper. And we probably will get through all that for the year. Frederick Douglass. Do you guys know who that guy is? Nope. No. Nope. He was a black man. Let me pull up a picture of him. He was born in Maryland in 1818. Oh. He was separated from his mother at a very early age. Oh, you're not reading, of course not. Let me pull up a picture so you can see. You've probably, you maybe you've seen a picture of him before. Here he is, pretty serious guy. 
he's uh, been through a lot and he is not alive anymore. That was back in the, what did you say? 18, early 1800s or uh, 1895 to 1895. Yeah. So that's still more than a hundred, 200. How many years ago would that be? Yeah. Like 200 years ago, long time ago. So, okay. Does anybody feel like reading it? Or reading a paragraph of it? Hey, there's three paragraphs and there's three students. How about you start, Oliver? You can. Augustus. Yeah, that is a serious name. You're right about that. Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey. Um, was born a slave in Maryland in 1818. I'm going to stop you right there for a second. Notice his last name is not Douglas, but the article is called Frederick Douglas. Okay, keep going. Uh, we'll find out why. He was separated from his mother at a very early age. When he was 12, the wife of a slave, slave owner began teaching him how to read, but her husband stopped her. He feared that slaves who learned to read were going to escape. However, Frederick did not give up. He taught himself to read by observing other children. And in turn, he taught other slaves to read. He also memorized much of the Columbian Orator, a collection of poems and speeches. The book informed his views on human rights and fueled his resolve to be free. Good. So interesting, huh? He didn't go to school, but he, his slave owner's wife, she must have had compassion on him and taught him. But he was concerned about that because once he learned how to read, he he would realize that he's a slave. Because you know, when young people, you can they're pretty impressionable, so you can convince them this is normal. You know, especially if they don't know how to read, they don't know how to read history, they'll be fine with it. Are you okay back there? Yeah, it's just a, it's a really nice chair. That's all. Yeah, you're not going to be in that chair though. You're, you're going to stay in that cold hard chair that you're sitting in right there <laughs> it looked like you were talking to somebody in there so you're scaring me a little bit but anyway uh but then he learned enough to know that he wanted to know more and that's why he just learned from other other kids other students other people that Colombian orator is a collection of famous poems and speeches and they probably were political because a lot of times in those days, they just wrote about what was going on in the world. And so once he started realizing, it's kind of like now, you guys are probably discovering, especially with the presidential stuff. I mean, Oliver was saying just when he came in about Trump having another assassination attempt, the second one. Yeah. It wasn't as dangerous. They weren't as close. Yeah. But he was playing golf and yeah. there was so a shooter. Like there was a GoPro. Yeah. They, the, uh, um, they lost or something. Like they can't find the GoPro. So mm. that's weird. Yeah. Makes you wonder what that's about. Um, so. The hard part about now, though, you guys probably already know this, is finding the truth is really, really hard to do now. Back then, they had books, really. They didn't have any digital anything. So it was just people's diaries and things that they recorded on paper but it's even harder now to find the truth okay anyway enough about that let's go to the second paragraph so audrey you can read the second paragraph at the age of 20 frederick disguised himself as a sailor and escaped to new york he changed his last name to douglas In massachusetts he began to speak at meetings about his rough experience as a, as a slave his friends feared that he would be recaptured by a slave owner so from 1845 to 1847, he lived in Ireland and Great Britain. In a letter to a friend, he wrote, I breathe in low, the chattel becomes a man. I employ a cab, I am seated beside white people. I enter the same door, I dine at the same table, and no one is offended. That's good. So he was writing like a poem because he was familiar with those. And that is the style back then but he was writing about his personal experience. And so other people across the world would read that and say, what? He sat with white people? He went through the same door? Like that was unheard of, but he's discovering, hey, I'm my own person and I can do my own thing. I can be my own person and not have to bend to all the political pressure and everything. 
So, okay, Victoria, go ahead and read the last sentence. Okay. I mean, the last paragraph. Douglas returned to the United States and continued to speak against slavery. On July 5th, 1852, he delivered a speech that eventually became known as What to, what to the Slave is the Fourth of July. According to Douglas's biography, it has been called the greatest anti-slavery oration ever given. He was photographed and often looked directly at the camera to confront the viewer with his stern look. After the slaves were freed, he continued to speak out against separatist uh -huh. movements. He died at the age of 77 and is remembered as one of the greatest men of his time. Okay, good. After the slaves were freed, he continued to speak out against separatists. So the separatist movements was white people over here, black people over there, they can't intermingle. Um, so he was before um, Martin Luther King Jr., but same type of concept where he realized that this is not right to have segregation and to treat blacks that, that way. This is early on in the 1800s. So, um, okay. So now we're going to work on the KWO. So let's go ahead and set that up. We are still doing, let me double check here, sentence by sentence, just this last one. I think we're going to branch off from that next week. So we've got three paragraphs. First one is Roman numeral one. Go ahead and put your name and date. Today's date is 9-16-24. Skip a line, call it Frederick. Frederick. And it has two S's like glass. K-W-O. And then we're gonna start with Roman numeral one. Roman numeral one has one through seven. Are they breaking? They're like, it's the part where they put lead into the like really thin. So it's like, yeah, lead and it's like the actual wood and pencil. If it breaks, I do have a sharpener back there um, under the microwave. I brought that from home. Roman numeral two. That one has one through six. Roman numeral three. That one has one through five. And I'm out of room here. Okay. Um, just to do a little practice again together, let's just go through Roman numeral one together and then you guys can start working on your own. So at the beginning of this page, um, let's start with Oliver. The first sentence. What should we put for our keyword outline for the first sentence? Um, um. F for Frederick, I guess. Um, I guess we could use his name, right? And count it. Can we count that? Because that's four words that it counts as his name. I think so. Yeah. Do you want to put his whole name in there? We could do F A W. Yes, just Washington Bailey every time. Just that first. So let's do his initials F A W Bailey. Just you can go back and look at it when you go to write that. Okay, we'll count that as one. Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey. And then what? One. Oh, he's still setting it up. Um, That's all right. Uh, Slave Maryland, I guess. Okay. Born, should we do that? Yeah. Born, slave. Oh, well, we already have a word. Slave Maryland, I like that. We could put the year. Yeah. I'm wondering about putting B1818. Slave Maryland. Or you could abbreviate Maryland. I think, what is the abbreviation for Maryland? Is it M? M A. I think it is. I don't remember either. No, MA is Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. How do you abbreviate 
Maryland. The answer I found is MD. MD. Maryland? Maryland. Mm -hmm. MD. Sounds like doctor. Yeah, I don't be able to remember that. <laughs> uh, okay. How about the next one, Victoria? Um, yeah. B for born. Born in 1818, he was a slave in Maryland. Okay. Um, 12. Oh, wait. Sorry, I skipped the sentence. Uh, separated mother. Um, young, I guess you could say. Yeah. You can put young or early. And that's okay that young is not actually on that sentence, but it, it's implied, so yeah. that's fine. And then Audrey? Uh, 12. Uh, hmm. There's a lot in that There's sentence. There's a lot in that sentence. We don't have to count 12. Uh, wife I guess we could do okay but then not his wife we could do, we could do wife and the owner read and then it stops him hmm good word true it's a good one Or if you put read before owner, then it'd be like the owner said. I like it next to owner, wife, and owner. That way we know it's not his wife at age 12, because that would be kind of weird, right? It's not Frederick's wife, but the wife of the owner, read, and then a stop sign. Just put S. We could put like an H if the husband stopped. And then back to you, Oliver. I feel like I'm on a news. Back to you in the studio. I'm showing her that so she can see that. Owner, please. Um. Wait, wait. He feared that slaves who learned to read would want to escape. That's the one we're on. Yeah. Oh, owner. I see, because you're referring to he. Yeah. Uh, we could do owner scared face. Um, read escape. Yeah. I guess because you just said that the husband stopped, and we could assume that that's going to connect to that. We could just put feared. We could do like age owner. Oh, for husband? Yeah. Okay. Age owner and then a scared face? Yeah. That might seem like you're saying the husband's owner, though. Oh, but you, you don't have to write that. You can just remember it's him. Yeah. Okay. Feared. How do you do a scared face like that? How do you do scared? Owner. And then feared. And then... I think I'm going to do reading equals escape. Oh, yeah. I like that. Reading equals escape. That's what he feared. Good. And then Audrey, when you're ready. Oh, that's an easy one. 
uh, Frederick, uh, uh, we could do like a, or not, we could do circle with a line and then give up, I guess. Yeah. Or we could do give up and circle it with a line. Yeah, we could do that also. Man, I don't hear that very often. I heard the ambulance. I heard the ambulance earlier. Really? Did you hear the uh, like by the Rennish the fire station? I heard them like blare their alarms at like midnight. So last like, night? Yeah, last night. Was there a fire? I mean, no, I didn't. I didn't check my window. No. I was like, happening. I can't tell if that's like. It sounds like they're coming on your street, but I can't tell if it's no fire or <laughs> or if it's like ambulance. I know. Maybe it's going away. Okay. It sounds like police. Does it sound like police? Yeah, it does. After that. Yeah. yeah, see, this is what I think about whenever I see police cars, I'm like, where are they going? Like, helicopters don't ever have something. Okay. okay. Oh, Sorry, I'm distracted. <laughs> what do you guys think? It's not me that they're searching for. Okay. Well, that's what they all Good said. to know. They can by all means. <laughs> Did you just say what I think you said? You don't mean that. No. No. What would we do without you? We'd be so bored. <laughs> All right. You have no one Whose turn is it? It's your turn, Victoria. After give up. So you need to do. You could do. Um, observing. Or read observing. And then. Oh man, that's a lot. Yeah. Read observing. And then tell me about people. Yeah. I'm just telling them. <laughs> what was the last part about women? <laughs> no. I didn't just color them in. <laughs> oh, I thought you said women. <laughs> and color them in. <laughs> I get it. What do you guys think? Is that going to work for you? Taught, observe, no. Observing, observing children. children. Taught. Well, I mean, he taught himself too, right? We could do taught self and others. Whatever makes sense to you. I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to put taught self plus others. And then Oliver, when you're ready. Oh, We're just going to do this first paragraph, by the way. Um, this still be okay. Um, I am. We could do memorize yeah TCO, I guess. Yeah. Well is that the name? We could put the whole name as counted as one. Yeah. And then collection. Yeah. Can way. you remember what it's a collection of? <laughs> Poems and speeches. Poems and speeches. P and S. Yeah. I like memorized. I think we need that. Memorized. Columbian, the Colombian orator. Orator. And then you said collection. P and the P plus S. Yeah. Poems and speeches. And then Audrey, how about the last one? Um, informed. Abused. 
We could do like draw like a little person on like a check mark for like human rights. Oh yeah. Uh and free. Yeah. What did you say for the human rights? Oh, uh, a check mark? A little person in a check mark. And you guys put whatever makes sense to you too. All right, now, before you put it away, um, let's think of some L-Y adverbs we can use in here. When we're talking about Frederick Douglass and thinking about some of the verbs that we have, uh, words like read, separated. Well, let's talk about separated. Let's start there. What's a good L-Y word we could use about that? Something that he was something we separated from his mother at a young age. Sadly. Sadly. Quickly. Quickly. So on the side here, on your outline somewhere, if you like that word, sadly, put that, or you can put quickly, or tragically would be a good one too tragically that way you can think ahead on where you want to plug in your ly advert for that paragraph so any of those would work um how about a who which clause looking at these that you wrote down in your outline um where can we put one of those in i think uh number three okay husband owner we've got um that reading would equal escape stopped frederick from learning Say that again with, with a who clause? Yeah. Okay, so the owner? Um, who thought that reading um, means escape stopped Frederick from learning. Okay, you could put a who there. So write it in the margin if you like that spot for your who clause. The owner who um, was afraid or who's, who was afraid of Frederick learning how to read. Frederick reading. Um, or oh, here's a good one too. He memorized the Colombian orator, which is a collection. That would be a good spot for a which clause. So sometimes this is a, a good skill to do to think ahead. Cause sometimes when you sit down to write, it's like, ah, where am I gonna put that who which clause? But if you have a little note, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember I was gonna put it in there. And remember, when you write these paragraphs, you're going to finish these at home. So you're going to finish two and three. And each paragraph is going to have a who or a which and an L-Y adverb. And you only need to underline one. Your okay. earring fell out. Say that again. Your earring fell out. Oh. Like just now? Is it in my shirt? Yep. Yep. I kept feeling them fall out. They're not wanting to stay. Thank you for telling yeah, me. Oh, you're mad. On the other side. A minute. I'm going to try to squeeze it a little tighter, maybe. Um, what am I saying? It was Ainsley. Do you know who Ainsley is? She gave them to me. Oh, today? Last weekend, or last week in class. And then she wasn't here today. Anyway, thank you. Um... <clears throat> Any questions? We're actually early. You guys can start working on this work on the second paragraph and you have less to do at home. How about you guys just work on the second paragraph on your own and then if you have any questions, let me know. That's less to do later, all right? It's less to do later. Go ahead and start working on the first one. At the age of 20, Frederick disguised himself as a sailor and escaped to New York.
I'm just going to tell Serena on this recording. They're working independently on Roman numeral two and three until it's time to go. So I'm going to turn off the recording. Your homework is going to be to finish the outline and write the three paragraphs. This is year two, so we're upping up, upping it. And make sure to follow the checklist. And we'll hopefully see you next week, Serena. Okay, bye.